Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Haiying Wang. I'm Danish school, so come from Huawei, and then a friend and a customer, Alex Suset from Waterphone. So today we come here to talk about the topic that we are very interested. We will try to encourage you guys to interest it. the convergence of IT and the CT infrastructure. So we know that uh, we're all here for OpenStack. So OpenStack has winning the support across industrial as a future IT uh, framework or control panel, whatever you call it. And the NFW, as initiated by telcos, uh, is widely endorsed by telco industries for their future blueprint of the infrastructure. So this is lots of, it's two trend, but it, there's lots of similarity between them. And it would be good for us to combine these two together. So this is what this talk about. Uh, so my talk will be break three parts. We're talking about the relevant industrial trends. So why this is transformation is going to happen. Uh, what's the technology driving force? And then we're talking. Then we talk about it from telco operator perspective. What really they want from MM3, from OpenStack, from the converging infrastructure. And, and finally, and most importantly, we'll talk about our experience um, in terms of challenges and opportunities for this convergence. So uh, this talk intended to get OpenStack community interested so we can achieve the OpenStack's mission to make OpenStack as a um, ubiqu ubiquitous operate open source um, cloud platform to be everywhere. So, okay, so industrial, and this is all the old news, hardware trend is software defined. And so a software defined it really represents a virtualization of underlying components to making it accessible through API. So what it really means to make hardware API driven elastic infrastructures. So what they do, they abstract the hardware, uh, pulling them together, and automated the management and configuration through APIs. So uh, specifically the two uh, technologies, virtualization and the scale out. So this has been done very well on server. Uh, that's where we have pioneered this. And now it's doing on network and uh, storage. So what they do, you want to, you're able to programmatic provisioning, and uh, since the, the, the separation of decoupling hardware from software, so with the separation, you are able to place and move the workload everywhere, and you provide more operation efficiencies through automations. So that's all we know what a virtualization bring to us. And this is gonna happen on network and the storage. And uh, they are flattening the structure, so the more pool and the fabric, and a commoditization using the standard components. So that's the trend. The driving force is really, we let a software decide what they want. Uh, that has been, that was very different 10, 20 years ago because the scarcity of hardware, everything is decided by hardware, you, you optimization around the hardware. And right now hardware has been them very well, so good that they become less important in terms of uh, uh, optimization, because they, every norm, moral law make them every 18 months double the capacity. But software doesn't. So now the lazy one becomes dominant force. So software uh, evolve more rapidly than hardware and infrastructure should be flexible to meet the needs. So that's a hardware trend and open stack. So cloud, we know uh, uh, earlier practitioner like Amazon has proved the value, and we know that's a, that's significantly challenge. A, ch a change the IT, we know it, the challenge the assumptions that we have regarding computing, not necessarily uh, expensive is good, and the commodity hardware can do much better job. So the OpenStack mission, I just repeat, we produce a ubiquitous open source cloud computing platform that will meet the needs of a public and private cloud. And then they are architecturally they are proven by the public cloud offers like uh, Amazon and Rackspace. And then they made it accessible to the masses for use for on community, community hardware. Another interesting trend in OpenStack and in general software is that innovation 
is happening uh, under the open source. And we see this for big data, for cloud, and uh, many other technologies. So open source is no longer follower. It's become the leader, the driver. Um, we also know that uh, cloud adoption, given the value, given the uh, need, should be uh, much faster, but they, they are not. They are very slow. I think uh, part of the reason may be technology. The other reason that the, the option is limited. So we have Amazon as that definitely uh, they pioneer the cloud. It's all credit for them. But they, they are the only one wonders. Not many people in this room can participate in this other than as a channel. And VMware, the dominant enterprise uh, virtualization, uh, but it's a wonder-driven uh, centralized architecture. So uh, looking at the history, anything for mass adoption, you really you have to a disruptive way to do it. And uh, open source, uh, in this case, Linux is a way to do it. And we see this happen in the history. We see the Linux, uh, Unix, Linux, we see the iPhone and the Android. So open source definitely will drive the adoptions um, much quickly. So NFV, um, as you guys probably know, I just repeat what the, their mission is and driving force. Um, they, are, they, they, try, they want to replace purpose-built uh, hardware with a standard hardware for better <coughs> price performance ratio. And there's lots of reasons. And I think uh, they basically want to challenge the assumptions that uh, Amazon challenged before, is that uh, commodity or standard component can support the networking functions that telco needs. Uh, it's just like Amazon saying, Expensive, high performance, high reliability, not necessarily the better IT infrastructure. So the driving force uh, for this is uh, low cost of operations. And we, we see telco have lots of pressure. Uh, the workload has significantly changed. Social web, OTT, uh, bring lots of traffic, but very few, very little revenues. Our friends and all tech operators know that. Uh, so hardware cost, and also the react react to the market and how to fast the provisioning your new service. And then the old uh, network application, uh, the cycle is very long. And uh, op managing and uh, uh, maintain the distributed equipment is challenging without a new uh, platform. And of course, fast time to market is another business driver reason. So this diagram, I don't repeat, this is, is on a white paper, um, um, NFV. Uh, they're talking about uh, moving this uh, silo uh, box approach into the common hardware infrastructure and application on top. We see that there's a lot of similarity what are we talking about a cloud. Uh, so this is the NFA reference architecture. Again, this comes from the white paper. So you can see bottom left a box is the NFA infrastructure. And you have a compute network storage, and then you have virtualization on top of that, and then you build the apps on top of that. So this is very similar. We can see the similarity between this and uh, cloud, and so as nature, we think cloud is perfect platform for NFV. And this is just an example saying one of the telco apps on the left, you have a box approach, you have a special build hardware box, ATCA, Equipment that you have the apps lying up, and then they have dedicated switch fabric behind, and you have controller. You have apps running on top of that, and they, it give you the very good performance. And when you move cloud, it's more like you the physical layer they all share the same compute uh, the resource layer, and then you move those apps into the VMs, and then and then you know, you build on top of that. So idea is that applications don't change. You just move them there, and that's the idea approach. What they achieve is the decoupling between software and hardware, uh, because the VM hides the complexity of what actual uh, hardware is, uh, is virtualization bring to you. Standardized interface between NFV elements and infrastructure. We know the cloud IS has become sort of a new hardware. They provide API for you to access and uh, telco network energy deployment through automation, rollout efficiency, those are the cloud bring you. 
a resource pool that can cover uh, the net, all the network elements. So uh, we're drawing another one. So if I put them there in uh, OpenStack form, that you have bottom, you have OpenStack uh, cloud. You can choose different hypervisor you like. And then on top, you have a traditional uh, middleware supported telco specific app. Then you have a middleware that supported uh, the IT apps, OSS, VM. And in the future, I hope this could be the, a new path that have abstraction to support um, telco apps. So this is basically the trend we see. We see the match. But does that work? What's the challenge ahead? And is this what telco want? Uh, what they, they are understanding. So here I bring my friend uh, Alex here, and he's come from Waterphone. He's a chief uh, cloud architect. So, Alex. All right. So um, um, we wanted to give a, a sort of telco operator perspective, and, and I wanted to share. Um, kind of the conversations we're having um, within the business. So it's not only a, a Vodafone conversation, it's an NSV conversation. Um, and we wanted to put that in the context of what OpenStack can do um, towards NSV, because we, we think it's a very good match, and we'd like to give some indications of, of what the challenges are and, and what, what really the perspective and the opportunities are for OpenStack. Um, so I, I always like to start with why. You know, why are we doing NFP? Um, hi. Um, spoke a little bit about it. Um, so basically, we have three main drivers. Um, standardization is very important, and it's an optimization of, of how we use our resources. So uh, to give you an example, today, uh, when we go in the core, we have a very tight link between software and hardware. So it makes upgrades very difficult. Uh, it, it forces us to build a lot of resilience. Uh, it forces us to sometimes even change the, up, the hardware when we need to do an upgrade. Um, and that's actually quite difficult to manage. So uh, with this standard and with the abstraction from software and hardware, uh, we can enable a much more um, uh, clear standard and communication towards our vendors as well. We can then increase resource utilization because we can start sharing the hardware uh, between different vendors. There, there's a lot of rules that we need to apply in order to do that, in order to guarantee quality of service, and that's the last piece here. Um, but we'll get into that on what OpenStack can do for that. Um, one of the aspects that we're very interested in is the programmatic aspect. So what are the APIs that we want to expose out of these platforms? You know, how can we give our vendors a clear line of, uh, of separation and say, these are the APIs we have, that's how you can use the infrastructure, and that's the standard we'd like you to use. So we, we always think, you know, develop once, deploy many times is really the way forward. Um, a telco application is extremely similar between Vodafone and Telefonica and, and a lot of the other telcos. Um, and the quality of service, um, as we're moving into the IT world more and more, we are starting to use IT standards, IT hardware. Uh, we may even use OpenStack. You know, we always keep in mind that IT is not perfect. It, it does fail, you know, servers fail, hardest fails. Um, so it, it's really about having the visibility of the environment, and I will get into that a bit later. But in the end, why are we really doing this? Well, it's because the user experience on the telecoms today is expanding all the time. I mean, if you think five years ago, you know, before the iPhones, before the, the smartphone movement, before the applications, we had a very clear demarcation on what uh, the core services were supposed to do. But today it's evolving at a pace that we never saw before. So we need to adapt new ways of, of being flexible, of being innovative. So the way we want to achieve that is, is well, first of all, you know, having high resilience and, and being a lot more distributed. Um, so sharing resources, programmatic exposure. Once again, I say that a lot, but standardized and proven technologies. And then the second piece is where we really want to be is we really want to accelerate the pace of innovation. Um, we have a lot of induced resources that we could actually expose for POCs or, or for 
what I, I call less traditional use case. Um, we can actually introduce a very small part of the core for a very special application, which in the past was extremely difficult to do. Um, and, and we don't know what this small application is going to do. So we need to put in place the technologies, the tools, the standards in order to allow for this more innovative approach, for, for this more open and, and fast pacing. So back to OpenStack, um, this is a view that, that we discussed and then we'd like to, uh, to communicate what you know, we feel that you can do as the OpenStack community. So um, I think there are three important focus points. The first one is performance. Um, so what we mean by performance is that uh, we know OpenStack is highly performant, it's, it's highly scalable, uh, but we need to have more um, inside view of what the hardware is doing. Um, and it's very important in telecom to have uh, a sort of agreed quality of service. So we cannot just expose core resources and then start sharing everything and then uh, having a service decrease because another tenant is using too much resources. Um, so that, that's why we say it's, it's good to build in SLA information so that we, we can be more flexible, we can guarantee, we can give extra resources to workload, but when the time is here for a customer to maybe make a phone call, that resource has to be there for the phone call and guarantee. Um, so I think the footprint will be important for, for OpenStack. So um, how can you expand into sort of NFD type organization, maybe expand into discussion with GSMA, so a lot of the standard bodies around telecom. I think it will be very interesting to, uh, uh, to get more involved. And uh, the resilience. Uh, so how can you uh, put in place some mechanisms that are going to guarantee that if we say this application needs you know, that amount of resources, uh, and if something is fading, how do you support that application in, in being resilient and maybe restarting somewhere else in the environment in, in really helping the application uh, having this dynamic uh, relationship with the infrastructure. And uh, the last point I really wanted to make today, uh, which is one of the discussions that, that I always have with the OpenStack people is, we need to really be strict about the standard on the APIs. As soon as we start to introduce APIs in these environments, um, it's very important that we can keep using these APIs going forward, that the API doesn't change. So backward compatibility is, is very important. We can expand the APIs, we can evolve them, but backward compatibility is, is fine because we don't want to have applications breaking when we upgrade, uh, especially in this type of environment. So that's it from my side. We get back to uh, Haim. All right. Thanks, Eric. So um, uh, Huawei, along with the partner, we have been experiment on NFV on OpenStack. And we, here we share some um, observations we have and experience and the challenges and problems that we think we're facing. So uh, there's from, from the uh, platform level, we, we do see right out of bat, there's an obvious difference from the focus. So what NFV want and what Cloud, current cloud provides. So uh, computation versus connectivity. So uh, we know the cloud side is the virtualization on server side. So it's nature that they're more computer centric, the current platform. Uh, Why the NFV, uh, the uh, telco world is more network centric. So this focus is different. And then secondly, that uh, um, why we, we have big apps in the um, in cloud world, but most often uh, the workload is a small app. Uh, so the cloud enable, the good thing in the cloud is that cloud enable multi-talent with many relative small apps to share the resource, the computer storage and network in a more efficient way. Uh, why the network, uh, the NFV needs a scalable network function. They can serve millions and tens of millions of subscribers for one or two apps. So they are sort of a big apps on the infrastructure in the Cloud is more small apps, although it's not extreme, it's in general. And then the virtual, uh, virtual and the physical world separation. So cloud really encourages totally decoupling. So the physical world, virtual world don't know anything about the physical world. But on the network functions, uh, on a, they are, there's a handoff between the physical world and the virtual world. So how you can build, connect the view among them 
uh, are the things that a, a telco is more interested in from network operations and from the manageability. So the challenge we see, the few issues we noticed as we along, work on that path, first is a, um, a cross data center hierarchical resource scheduling. So as was mentioned, a telco app instance, you really spread multiple data centers. It's big, it's multiple countries, you know, one apps. And operator, and then not only that, an operator want to be look at as a one hierarchical or one center. They can deploy them and you distribute them among the different data centers. So these things that are uh, not very obvious in the current cloud. Affinity scheduling and telco app really have multiple decoupled app related together. So there's a special tension between their relationship uh, and the heavy intern VM traffic. Uh, also the high availabilities and the policy governor redundancy. Those are the very different in telco because reliability, scalability always a focus on telco. Um, then the cross version upgrade. The, uh, the, the upgrade uh, on the cloud world right now we're more focused on the platform on VM level. But telco is more on the, uh, they have a large data plan traffic, they use some, some of hardware accelerators. So this make platform upgrade not an idea for their case. Uh, redundancies and also uh, they are app focused instead of platform focused. So these things are the things that we know it's, 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 it's challenging. And so the, the, the here we use a diagram to show this. So you can see the problems with an operator. When you move, we, we show the diagram before. So when you move one box software model into the cloud model, and the box model, you in the back end, you have a full fabric switch that guarantees the network. And so the low latency or zero loss. And uh, you have a controller, and you have dedicated uh, bandwidth. But on the cloud world, the best effort, you cannot guarantee this. So box based application rely on network fabric that is not provided. We hope the SDN can solve this problem down the road. The SDN could probably have best hope in telco apps than the enterprise apps. And the net, I mentioned net, net lack of a connected view of a physical and a virtual. This is harder for the troubleshooting for the operation. So, uh, so we ported a few apps and work with our partners. So some issues we noticed on the current platform from the, the network function is the parity issues, manageability, performance, reliability, uh, maintainability, those are different. And existing operation tools are no longer meet the needs. So um, when you go to the virtual world, the physical monitoring tool will not work, but we don't have one that connects both physical and the, and the, the uh, virtual world. Troubleshooting across physical and the virtual world, those are things that uh, uh, are missing or not exist. Um, this is all, the next one problem is more as related with affinity, is that we lack, lack the app level support. We support VM where we are, although we have some discussion in the OpenStack community about a container. It's basically you want to group resource together to support a one apps instead of just for individual VM. This is for resource provisioning for scaling, for uh, SLA, for all this stuff. Uh, we need a, a granularity beyond the VM. And so you have an infrastructure, you have a resource container that can group the resource. When you scale, you scale the whole resource as a pool instead of individual. So, um, so we, this is some a thought we, we are working on that. So for solving the hierarchical data center resource scheduling, you can do the tree hierarchy among data centers, and there's a root, and everybody report that, introduce the hierarchy on the data centers. Um, and then uh, the kind of NOVA scale probably not work well, so for multiple data centers. So we have some suggestions to ex extend, we need to configure firewall into cells. Uh, so those are the things that uh, we think we're working on that. We want the community to, to also pay attention to that, right? Because to expand the platform to the cloud, uh, to the telcos, uh, this, this challenge is um, uh, important for them to adopt the, uh, overcome those problems. It's important for them to adopt the cloud platform. And affinity schedule, 
here we just have a, uh, we, we already practice uh, using short term, you can have a, use a available zones and put things together. And long term, you probably have a better scheduling algorithm that it can imply, can, I, can bring the policy into the scheduling. So when people deploy an app, they can just specify what they want and then the engine can execute. But in the time, right now we use the available mechanism to do it and it's, hard, it, it, it's doable, it's just harder. So uh, here I'll draw a different diagram. If you have a container, I just mentioned. If you have a container and this and LXC, the few guys doing this, uh, this will help uh, adoption is that you can, they can move the whole app because the idea is that most apps, they don't want to rewrite. They want to just move to the virtual world. So how you can help them behave as it, is, as it was in the box approach. So if the container can simulate that environment, that would be the good. And then we see the discussion in the open stack. Uh, Docker is probably one of the options there uh, for the container approach. And then uh, overall we want to, and it's an uh, application-centric architecture. Really in the technical case, it's more specific. And on the network side, it's true. On the application level, we want to have abstraction that support the concept in NES V. Uh, in the networking that you can, app can actually define the network infrastructure you want. You can define SRA on top of that. And there's some work there, uh, Linux container and AWS have something like ops work. Open have a heap. So those, we, we see them moving to that direction and we just want to bring more use case uh, for the community to work on that. And app level HA and data protection, uh, that's not a discussed in OpenStack yet. And uh, VMware actually recently pushed for uh, HA for uh, app. And then app level monitoring SRA, that's crucial for uh, operators. Um, so here we more bring more questions and challenges for you and we work on with our customer partners. We also encourage the OpenStack community to work with us and to put more effort in there. And then they obviously see some signs they're moving on that direction. And here we just give you more evidence why this is important. For telco world and to bring the big apps to the platform. So uh, this is basically uh, the slides I have and we have all the uh, authors here. And so if you guys have a questions, uh, you can ask now or you can ask after the um, uh, this session. And again, thank you. Thanks. I've got a question for both of you about performance. So I was interested that you were talking about the scaling across multiple data centers question, which I agree is, is important. Um, but I was also interested that you, you didn't say anything about getting good data plane performance. So I mean, as, as I see it, one of the key differences between NFV style apps and normal you know, uh, enterprise apps is the requirements for data, very high data plane performance, lots and lots of very small packets. Mm -hmm. And you sort of mentioned SIOV in passing, but you, you didn't address the question that you know, today, the options for delivering a high data plane performance on, on Intel hardware are either SRIOV, which isn't supported by OpenStack today, um, or something like a DPDK accelerated OpenV switch, which again isn't really supported by, by OpenStack. So do, do you recognize those as, as issues and what, what, how, what do you see as the solutions? You want to take on this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's our chief architect, so he's yeah. doing more of the work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've uh, uh, we've uh, identified the situation where the lots of uh, enhancements still uh, need to be, uh, you know, added to the uh, incumbent uh, OpenStack communities. Uh, yeah. Technology is complicated. Hello? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So uh, Huawei is actually very, uh, very actively uh, working together with our uh, telecom operator partners to try to identify the potential uh, uh, gaps 
between the, the, the commercial availabilities of these uh, OpenStack-based uh, standardized uh, infrastructures to supporting all the uh, uh, various kinds of uh, telecom uh, applications and elements on top of these uh, uh, infrastructure support. And we are also contributing a series of uh, uh, mentioned, the so mentioned uh, uh, enhancement uh, of these uh, infrastructure layers, uh, propose them to the OpenStack communities uh, you know, uh, design panels for discussions. And whether it's the, these uh, enhancements, both at the management layers of uh, OpenStack, as well as the hypervisor layers, to be accepted and uh, embraced into the uh, 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 open source communities. Uh, I think your specific question is about the, um, the data traffic, the data plan performance. Yeah. Uh, in special regard to uh, data uh, plane performances, we have uh, worked closely also uh, on the DPDK as well as uh, Huawei uh, uh, proposed the solutions of uh, direct uh, data plane pass-through for, for the mapping between the data interface cards and the uh, processing, uh, general uh, x86-based processing cards. So the, uh, we, we uh, call this uh, as, as a net map solution. So these, these one we, we uh, uh, besides these, the, the, there might be also uh, uh, open flow based, uh, you know, uh, hardware switch solutions uh, to, uh, under the control of the uh, SDN controllers of the, uh, or the nurture plugin. Yeah, there might be several various uh, standardized uh, options to support uh, and to propose to the uh, open source community. So I think we're still in the early stage to explore. So first we identify what's the problem. Yeah. And, uh, and we did, a, we even run a workload on VMware platform. We see the signal degradation and the performance. So we want to figure out, right now we're not proposed which one's the right way to do it. We just figure out what's the problem that is. And we systematically see whether we can approach to solve this problem. Hi. Um, as you mentioned, that um, the um, SDN is going to be a long journey, and now we are just getting started and in early phase of taking a look at the technology and how it helps. Um, from your typical experience, what is the return on investment that's being seen? Like, you know, is a hard dollar cost savings, or is a new revenue stream that is being created? And what is the return on investment in this early stage that could be realized through the technology track? Well, if I guess, there's no return at this stage. This is all just investment. <laughs> and, but, but it's the future. So you're betting on, because there's a workload here and other people doing the SDN workload. It's really the complexity of the network block, lots of things happening. So that's why Google and other are doing very well, because they really make their infrastructure fluid flow their traffic, and the rest of them are not. The enterprise is a fixed workload, so the driving force is actually less powerful in our world. Calculus is actually stronger. We just, we just couldn't find the right platform. So in, in our practice, we do try a same approach, but I think it's probably earlier to say in dollar terms how the ROI will be. But uh, I hope that's the right, right thing you bet, and then the return will be huge. Yeah, generally, uh, for from uh, our point of view, it's the, uh, the the most pragmatic, near-term uh, uh, investment uh, benefits of uh, SDN is majorly the within the data center to construct an overlay network, which will greatly improve the uh, networking administration uh, efficiencies uh, <coughs> based on this uh, SDN technology. Uh, th th this is the most near-term uh, profits that could be gained. Yeah, some yeah. of companies, that's really right. So for manageability, yeah. visibility, SDN does seem good. So SDN-based monitoring, SDN-based yeah. manage provisioning, it's, it's much efficient because they can automate this process, yeah. um, connecting the data more uh, system-wide instead of a traditional approach. Um, but so that's maybe the early stage of ROI. Just going back to your uh, comment you made about uh, five minutes ago about um, communicating with some of the 
current OpenStack implementation, some of the requirements on gaps. Could you give us uh, just a few examples of what th there might be? You know, I'm, I'm curious to know what kinds of requirements and what kinds of gaps you're, you're identifying. And specifically, I'd like to understand a bit better about your requirements for service chaining, you know, as you start chaining services together. Uh, I, I think I didn't mention that one. I think that this is you, you want, yeah, that's a, I, I, um, so the we don't really officially communicate with OpenStack. We are, we are part of OpenStack. We are we're together. Uh, so we 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 identify the gap. Other than uh, through the, our uh, experiment, we just actually doing. We're not just writing paper and then look at what's going on. We just move the app because we know the app. We write most of the apps. And then our partner operate most of the apps, and so we we move these apps and uh, to this platform see what's going on. And then we find a place and then we try to solve this problem. And I think the, the service chain, uh, uh, you guys probably chime in. I, I, we haven't go to that level yet, but uh, maybe you guys can add on. Yes, uh, uh, some examples of, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, proposed uh, so, uh, enhanced solutions on o uh, OpenStack, uh, especially novel. Uh, the examples are, for example, the federation of uh, multi -da multiple data center uh, OpenStack. Uh, previously, we, we've uh, proposed solutions of, uh, for example, a hierarchical scheduling mechanisms of uh, multi-data center uh, OpenStack, which are still a blank uh, areas for, for OpenStack. And then the, the, the finally, is the, uh, within the internal uh, discussions, they found that it can be converted into the federation scenarios. This is one case. And the other uh, is the uh, affinity, which is the multi-factor based, and not only single factor, single compute storage and networking factor based uh, scheduling algorithms, but also considering the correlations, uh, limitations between the virtual machines. So the, uh, by taking these uh, limitations or uh, confinement into considerations during the scheduling uh, mechanisms. This is another pro pro uh, such kind of uh, proposals uh, just uh, uh, within the topics in the, in the design panels, yes, uh, which is uh, ongoing these days. Oh, hi. Uh, a question for Alex, if you will. Um, can you just sketch briefly some of the, you know, the NFV or SDN projects that uh, Vodafone has uh, got going? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> um, so we, we've had a successful uh, demo of uh, voice over LT in Germany. Uh, so that's running on NFV today. Um, that, that's one of the main use cases that we have today. Um, but then, you know, later on, we're, we're exploring with the community what the next applications will be. But at least in, in our German um, opco, uh, we are really strong on getting voice over LT on NFV so that we can then you know, make it more manageable, upgrade later, because we, we feel that new features will come with voice over LT and that you know, we need to be ready for this. Yeah. Okay, and, and just sort of, okay. uh, if I can sort of re reframe the question I asked earlier yeah. about you know, w w where do you see the benefits? I mean, in a service like that, is it, is it like a, the savings, the flexibility, the agility? What, what, uh, what is the little? agility, yeah. Mainly the agility, really. Since you mentioned about the uh, overlay solution, so you think that one was more like a temporary or you still believe in the long run for the telco or for the Huawei, for the vendor provider, for the open flow disruptive? It's more the future way to go because it's kind of a lot of investment to put on this one. Everybody's trying to calculate this is SDN is a sexy word, but we don't know how this ROI return. We know the agility is good. But how do we invest on that one? Any like the early stage open flow adoption or the experience you can share with the everyone? Thank you. So basically, uh, uh, our uh, uh, understanding about the uh, SDNs uh, uh, beneficial to the uh, to our customers that, uh, as you mentioned, the agility is trying to build up a, a fully uh, physical networking fabric decoupled logical networking layers, which is a 
which is highly application dependent and, and services driven. Uh, so that you can build up a logical uh, overlay network without much uh, dependencies on the incumbent networking devices. Uh, this is the uh, uh, major uh, advantages we've been identified uh, uh, at current stages for, for, for the overlay solutions. But while at the same time, we're also clearly aware that uh, there's some performance bottleneck problems uh, encountered by the pure software-based solutions. Uh, we, 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 we are uh, doing these uh, enhancement and curement uh, in, in two directions. One is the uh, hardware accelerations, uh, for example, to enable some uh, uh, switch boxes, uh, Tor switches boxes, or some uh, NIC cards to be able to offloading this uh, processing. While at the same time, of course, they are to uh, optimize further on the uh, x86 platform-based uh, performances for the user plane. Yeah. One follow-on question on one follow on question on this one yeah. is if if you have the hardware Tor switch already can do the overlay, yeah. so that one kinda improves the performance. Why you still need the open flow or the data plane and control plane separation to try to do the work? Uh, yes the uh, we the if the Tor switch is uh, acceptable for our customers then uh, maybe uh, so in some cases for for example our Vodafone customers, they, they might prefer a uh, cost hardware-based solutions. In that case, then uh, maybe vSwitch-based uh, standardized overlay solutions might be a good, better choice. Uh, but for some, uh, some uh, cases, if the, uh, the hardware and uh, software hybrid solutions is uh, accepted, then we can use the latter. Uh, and especially, uh, we, uh, in the multi-data center uh, consolidation scenarios, we might uh, normally encountered with uh, multi-vendor uh, net network solution provider scenarios, where, it, where the, the, the integration uh, cloud solution provider might not have the dominant power to, to, to urge the, all the uh, engaged networking providers to, to, to provide the uh, compliant solutions uh, according to the integration uh, provider uh, requirement. So the overlay, uh, in this case, is the best approach to solve this uh, multi-vendor uh, compatibility problems. OK, so I have to end. Mm -hmm. yep. We won, then we're over the time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> OK, Thank you.